I'm pleased to welcome to the stage Protocol Labs' lead for engineering and research, Molly McInley, who in addition to be a, being a world-class engineer, is also a writer, whose book, Goodbye to All That, is well worth a read. P everyone, please welcome Molly to the stage to tell us about the top three Filecoin breakthroughs of this year. Thank you. Someone clearly Googled me. Um, I feel found out uh, way back in the day. In a previous life, I worked on the Google search team and learned by working with Google Books that uh, you could uh, become more well known in your Google search results if you published a book. So I published a book. Um, and it's actually not that hard. I do highly recommend it. But yeah, if you, uh, if you decide you really want to <laughs> know about what my life in New York was like, you can go read my very, very short essay. I think it's like 12 pages. It's the tiniest book you'll ever read. Um, uh, uh, inspired by Joan Didion's Goodbye to All That. So, small world. Decide whether it wants to load. All right, hello everyone. Um, thank you so much. It's exciting to chat with you all today. Um, would love to share a little bit of my vantage point, uh, some of the really exciting things. I narrowed it down to three and that was challenging. Uh, maybe I'm kind of cheating and I'm counting a couple that I think are big breakthroughs of 2023 that we've already done. I'm not counting those, um, but I wanted to dive into some of the really exciting work that's happening in the Filecoin ecosystem around storing, retrieving, computing, and scaling the Filecoin blockchain. So first off, the mission of Filecoin, this should be really familiar to all of our friends here today, um, is to create a decentralized, efficient, and robust foundation for humanity's information. And that's really by working with clients around the world, helping them onboard their data onto Filecoin um, so that Filecoin can help maintain it and store it long term with much cheaper storage prices, with a much more resilient foundation for their information, not putting it in centralized data sources or intermediaries, um, and then make it useful to them, make it accessible, um, make it a foundation they can depend upon in the future, and start providing more useful services on top of that data storage, retrieval, compute, and much, much more. This might also be familiar. It's the Filecoin master plan. Um, Juan helped sum up this amazing kind of ecosystem mission and organize it into these three steps. First was to build the world's largest decentralized storage network, which check mark we have achieved. Um, there are thousands of storage providers across uh, tens you know, 44 plus different countries, um, storing exabytes and exabytes of capacity, um, making that available to uh, individuals around the world, data sets around the world, um, and uh, making this not only the largest decentralized storage network, but also the cheapest decentralized storage network in the world, um, which is an amazing asset for all of humanity. Click. Um, step two was to onboard and safeguard humanity's data. Um, and when Juan initially gave uh, this, this uh, talk around the Falco's master plan, um, we were still in the very, very early days of this trajectory. Um, we'd only kind of just got the, um, you know, the, the scalable data onboarding tools working. Um, but now that story is very, very different. There's tons of different data onboarding ramps. There's all of these amazing clients who are storing their data with Filecoin. Um, and you can just see the amazing acceleration of data onboarding um, and daily data onboarding, which just, uh, Day before yesterday, crossed six petabytes of data being onboarded on Filecoin per day, which is just nuts if you think about it. If you want to onboard six petabytes to something, you have like cars with, you know, racks in the back of it that you are transporting to the location where you want to onboard it into the network. Um, and this really just shows that the whole network has upgraded our capacity and our capability to store this useful data. Um, 
And so now there's you know, over 150 unique daily onboarders. Those are storage providers that are offering um, data onboarding services over um, 1,750 clients, unique clients who are storing data um, with you know, a large portion of that storing over 100 terabytes um, uh, of data. And as I mentioned, we crossed that six petabyte per day threshold, which I will tell you a year ago seemed impossible. Um, and now there's over 1.2 exabytes of data onboarded um, onto Filecoin um, by all of these amazing, amazing groups. Um, and I think that's something absolutely that we can celebrate. Um, it's, it is a breakthrough that has happened uh, over the course of last year and this year, um, but it sets us a really good foundation to then bring additional services, additional capabilities, additional tooling to this foundation. Um, and there's actually a really amazing website if you want to go engage with what are people storing right now, um, you know, how might I work with this? How might I build on top of this? Um, there's a great dashboard at filecoin-explorer.com, which describes how that data is spread out across different industries and different participants, different regions. Um, and you can actually go and introspect into the USC Shoah Foundation data, the Internet Archive data, um, the Solana data sets um, that are all being stored. And there's GitHub links um, to, to each of them um, so that you can go and, and uh, you know, engage and help replicate their data data sets um, uh, to, to help make sure that we're storing this resiliently across many, many parties. And as you can see, these are large scale data sets as well. These are not just you know, your initial proof of concept to show that this is working. This is massive you know, genomics data sets, massive um, you know, testimonials, uh, videos. You have you know, blockchain data that's getting onboarded, et cetera. Click. Thank you. Um, and these really span a whole series of different use cases. And so that's one of the amazing things about working with um, all of these, you know, world-class uh, partners to, to bring their data. We have data that documents um, you know, what's happening in Ukraine from the Starling Lab. We have uh, CERN's Atlas project that's storing neutrino data. And like, let me tell you, when you're talking about large data, you do not know large data until you, until you start talking to CERN. And man, do they collect a lot of data that they want to make accessible to researchers around the world. And they want to you know, harness so that we can find the next Higgs boson or whatever the more recent one was, um, so we can learn more about about the world around us. And like that's the sort of data that we need a robust foundation for humanities information for. All right, and so that, that's a, um, a domain step two. We've seen immense progress in the past year and a lot to celebrate there. Um, and that brings us on to step three. Um, having 1.2 exabytes of data stored in Filecoin um, starts asking the question, well, what can I do with that data? How do I make that data more useful? How do I interact with that data to solve problems as a client and user? Um, and that's what step three is about, bringing compute to the data, enabling web scale applications to interact with and build on top of that data, making that data useful to the clients who've stored it. Um, and that really boils down into kind of four main parts. We've already talked about verifiable storage. We've made immense progress there. That's a significant building block and achievement in and of itself. Um, but then there's three other really important areas that are my top three breakthroughs for 2023 that I think are still work in progress um, that I want to talk with you more about today, which is robust retrievals, programmable compute, and global scalability. Um, robust retrieval is talking about um, all of the work that Filecoin Saturn is doing and a number of other retrieval markets as well to enable um, global fast access to data that's stored um, across Filecoin storage providers. Um, there's also work being done around uh, light retrieval clients and retrieval incentives to make sure that when you put your data in Filecoin, um, you can access it and load it through things like the IPFS gateway seamlessly. Um, Programmable compute, obviously we've done immense progress, launched in March this year around the Filecoin virtual machine. Continues to be amazing work happening there, but the really exciting part is not just compute over the state of the Filecoin blockchain, it's unlocking compute over data. Um, and there's awesome progress that folks here heard from Ali, but I'll give you a quick recap as well um, around how Buckle Yao and Lilypad and other projects are really bringing compute to those data sets, which is a huge opportunity for both Filecoin storage providers and Filecoin storage clients who now want to run ML algorithms, who want to do um, 
you know, transformations over their data to make them more useful or tuned for certain applications. Um, this is a really, really exciting opportunity that's making blindingly fast progress. So uh, a lot to look forward to and celebrate there as well. Um, and last but not least is, what does that longer term picture look like around global scalability for the Filecoin blockchain, for all of the networks building on top of the Filecoin blockchain? What should we as Web3 be aiming for as an ecosystem so that we can have, have all of the applications and tools of Web2 be able to build upon the same Web3 primitives that we think should be the primitives underpinning the web at large? Um, and how do we actually help uh, enable those folks to come join us on this quest? So diving first into retrievals. Um, so one of the things that we've built in the past year in order to unlock and enable faster retrievals is Lassie. Um, the team uh, has been working hard to help up the retrieval success rate, um, have easier tooling for um, using every different data transport, querying where data is located across um, Kubo nodes, across boost nodes, across uh, the interplanetary network indexer, so that whenever you have a CID, you can find who is providing that CID, the data addressed by that content identifier, um, and you can use any different transfer protocol from graph sync to bit swap to even HTTP to go find and fetch that content and return it to you. And we've seen that be massively useful, um, not just for folks who are trying to access their data directly from things like Boost, but this is now embedded inside Filecoin Saturn, which is also acting as a Web3 CDN and uses Lassie as its retrieval client um, in order to fetch, fetch data from many different re, uh, locations, whether that's a Kubo node or an IPFS or a Filecoin storage provider. So talking more about Saturn, um, this is a Web3 CDN oriented towards fast retrievals. There's over 3,700 points of presences or L1 nodes in the Saturn network, which is amazing. It's been less than a year and already thousands of, of people are running these retrieval clients. Um, they earn Filecoin rewards through an FEVM smart contract, which um, pays out and validates these nodes um, as they're providing their, their retrieval services. Um, and Saturn is currently onporting the IPFS gateway at IPFS.io as their first production client, which serves around 1.2 billion requests per week. Um, and this is you know, the perfect proof point of offering very fast access to data that's stored across many different sor sources, whether that's um, data that's been onboarded to Filecoin by NFT.storage. And let me tell you, NFTs are loaded off the IPFS gateway like nobody's business. Um, and But whether that's websites that have been uploaded by Fleek, whether that's um, you know my personal <laughs> website for sure, um, but any documentation or even some of these amazing Filecoin storage clients that we've been talking about, um, like Solana, who wants to load their blockchain data off the IPFS gateway from their Filecoin storage client uh, contracts. Um, and so we've built a, a number of different modular components in order to help upgrade Saturn. Um, and you know, after uh, getting the IPFS gateway super happy in production, we'll be moving on to a number of other groups. So if you're interested to hear more about Saturn, you want to maybe join Web3.Storage and Metaplex on our wait list, um, come talk to me. I would love to, to know what you're excited about loading um, and accelerating uh, across IPFS and Filecoin. Um, last but not least, um, a big part of our retrieval story as well is making sure that we are evaluating and rewarding retrievals correctly across the Filecoin network. Um, you know, Filecoin, Saturn, and other retrieval markets are a great step for it to be highly advantageous for storage providers to continue to provide retrieval services. Um, but even more than that, we programs like Filecoin Plus absolutely desire that the you know, public useful data that's onboarded through them remains accessible and useful on the, the network and can be audited and validated by many other groups. Um, and so there's a, um, some great work happening kind of on the intersection of impact evaluators and the station and Saturn projects to make sure that we are correctly measuring, evaluating, and incentivizing Filecoin retrievals, um, especially starting with uh, those Filecoin Plus data sets um, to make sure that they are useful um, for all of the parties who care about them um, and that we are able to bring those 
those incentives back to Filecoin storage providers, um, which is something that's been talked about in the Filecoin Plus community for a long time. Um, but first, we need the measurements, and we need to make sure that we have good data on what retrievals actually look like. Um, and so that's, that's the first step that's happening this quarter to build towards um, even deeper incentives in Q4. This thing hates me. At this point, we're just going to do a little circle, and we're going to figure out <laughs> where it might. There we go. All right, back where we started. Um, uh, number two of my uh, top three breakthroughs for 2023 is programmable compute. Um, as folks know, Falcon Virtual Machine launched. Oh, now it's now it's really snazzy. Um, launched earlier this year, um, and this brought smart contracts and programmability to Filecoin. And so we've now seen a plethora of really interesting applications start getting launched um, from DeFi to storage applications and far beyond. Um, this is fully EVM compatible, so all of these are you know, running in Solidity. Um, and FVM was designed especially to have a hypervisor layer. So not only can we plug in EVM, which was our first runtime in FVM, but we're already working on bringing our next runtime to FVM so that more more and more different developers um, can, can bring their applications and it can connect Filecoin even more closely into other ecosystems. Oh, yeah, now it's really trigger happy. Well, what you, oh, there we go. Um, here are a couple of what, what I think are some of the most exciting um, perpetual at automatic storage, some of the work that's happening across NFT.storage and Lighthouse, where they're actually making recurring Filecoin storage deals. You, you know, give them a, an endowment up front, and they automate the process of um, monitoring and renewing those storage deals um, long into the future, which I think is fantastic and definitely something that we can now add to the repertoire of all of those uh, useful clients client interfaces um, in, in Filecoin. Um, we have some really interesting stuff happening around compute, which I'll talk about in just a second. Um, obviously, Retrieval is now utilizing those on-chain payment contracts. Um, and then some really awesome work happening around data DAOs and NFTs, helping give individuals who are storing data control and agency over the data that they store, that they curate, that they collect, um, so that they can, say, make that available to compute or um, ML algorithms. Uh, being run on Filecoin. Just gonna keep clicking, just keep clicking. Okay, cool. Um, so I mentioned compute over data is the, the, the star of the show, not just starting um, with actually being able to, to run those programmable smart contracts, but building layers of compute on top. Um, and definitely the, the amazing example here is um, all of the amazing AI work that's happening, um, all the new machine learning algorithms that are getting deployed and wanting, like desperately ch looking for access to any GPU they can get their hands on in order to scale their training um, or refine their algorithms with new input data. And so this is a really exciting opportunity, not just for Filecoin with all of this data to train over, but with all of these storage providers who have resources amassed that they can now also put to work within compute over data networks um, so that they can uh, contribute those and also receive additional revenue sources for the work that they do. Um, and so the exciting... We expect Filecoin to be used not just uh, for one compute over data network, but for many compute over data networks. So um, it's optimized as this um, L1 that can support um, uh, different L2s that are optimizing for different points within Juan's triangle, um, whether it's really optimizing around privacy and fully homomorphic encryption, really focused on performance, utilizing, say, optimistic compute and verification methods, or focused deeply on verifiability and ZKP and willing to take some of the trade-offs around, um, you know, say, performance that might be required there. Um, and so this is something that we think is going to be a thriving space with many different projects able to build with each other, um, which is why we created Bakliao, which is on the next slide. 
Thanks. I'll just tell you when I want to go to the next slide. Um, so Bacalhau is the IPFS of compute over data. Um, it's designed to be a modular computing um, library that allows you to quickly spin up uh, networks of nodes and underpin many of those L2s with common building blocks that they want to use to run their jobs, a common job spec, so you're able to pipeline and interoperate between many of these networks and gets you up and running super fast. Like, you can use this in a hackathon, in a day, and have your own compute network up and running very, very quickly, which is great. Next slide. There we go. Um, another great example is Waterlily. So Waterlily took Bacalhau, took FVM, and was able to start deploying smart contracts that connected to a network of Bacalhau nodes. Um, at first, Waterlily used a centralized network of I think it was like 50 Bacalhau nodes that were all being um, run together, but created a nice bridge from FEM where you could um, submit your prompt, um, run your, uh, your job, uh, your I think it was stable diffusion uh, job, and then come back um, and mint an NFT with your rainbow <laughs> generated unicorn um, in the style of whatever artist you wanted. And it also donated back to that artist um, in, you know, for, the, for running that compute job over their data set in particular, which is really awesome, kind of that royalty split going back to the data owner and data creator. Um, it's a great example of what's possible um, when we actually loop in those data owners into the compute process. Um, but the, the downside of Water Lily, and the reason we wanted to take a step further from this, was that it was it wasn't possible for other people to bring their own compute nodes, their own compute resources to underpin um, that compute network. Um, and so that's what's super exciting about Lilypad v1 instead of v0, which is a new testnet specifically utilizing Bacalhau where other people can start bringing their own compute nodes um, and runs um, using this kind of modicum flavored um, evaluation method, uh, an ability to to assemble those networks, uh, assign compute jobs smartly across that network so that, you know, hey, if there's data co-located with this particular compute node, we can intelligently uh, locate the compute with the data so we don't have to re-download it over uh, small bandwidth. Um, and then it can evaluate that those jobs are being done correctly, um, you know, assign uh, kind of like fault fees if, if anything is found to be incorrect, um, and then, uh, accelerate this whole test net. It's still very early days. They've only just gotten it set up, um, but we're, we're going to be uh, welcoming more folks to bring their own comp compute nodes to that network um, in the coming weeks. So grab that QR code if you're interested in learning more about Lilypad. There's a ton of docs about where we're at right now and the next steps we're taking um, to run you know, entirely on FVM, utilizing IPC so that not only can Lilypad as a network you know, operate as a, a layer two on top of Filecoin, but it can also uh, recursively shard and even have regional subnets, which I'll tell you more about in just a second, um, so that you can do very, very fast compute jobs in local, um, local networks or local areas. Um, and so, uh, there we go. This is the, the slide that highlights, hey, this is pretty exciting. If you're a storage provider or someone who has extra compute resources, um, this is an opportunity for you to join this testnet. Um, we're still early days. It's just a testnet. But the aim is that we'll be able to unlock additional rewards for people who can kind of amass their resources um, and offer them to folks who are um, you know, paying for compute jobs, um, starting with both looking at the a AI ML use case, um, especially for fine tuning things using LoRa, and also the data onboarding use case, where not only do you want to transform data when it first comes onto Filecoin to make sure it's all content addressed and car filed and great, but maybe you want to be rerunning compute jobs over that data over time um, to make it more optimized for a specific use case or um, continue to to tune that data set and restore the outputs in Filecoin. And so it's all set up already using the wonders of Bacalhau, where you can point to your existing data via CID and then store that data back in Filecoin. So all nice and easy. All right, last but not least is around global scalability and making sure that we have kind of a web scale foundation for all the work that we're doing here. Um, so you might have heard of IPC, or interplanetary consensus, um, which is really focusing on how do we move hundreds of transactions per second. How do we scale to reach some of these, um, you know, YouTube, Twitch, 
large scale, fast paced applications that can't go through a tiny, tiny, tiny consensus bottleneck. Um, and if we're gonna really bring those applications into Web3 and have them uh, be bringing, say, like a, um, you know, a, a Web3 game where every single interaction is not just you know purchasing some NFT, but actually interfacing with each object inside that video game um, ends up on the blockchain. We just need drastically better scalability than we have today. Um, and so the, this uh, this brings us to IPC hierarchical scalability for Filecoin via subnets. Um, and that this is very exciting as well. They just launched uh, Milestone Two, so it is now possible to spin a subnet up off of Filecoin mainnet. It also exists on CalibrationNet if you want to try it out first before actually interfacing with the the real deal. Um, but they have a testnet that is live where you can start spawning subnets off of Filecoin um, and getting to interface with this as well. Um, um, and definitely this, uh, this is a very exciting milestone, but it has not been audited yet. So don't go and put tons of fill in it uh, or do anything crazy. Um, but we are gearing up for that milestone um, by refining the, the node runner so that when you spin up these networks, it's really easy to get started. Um, and also auditing all of our smart contracts that exist today to make sure that they are um, you know, all buttoned up and safe. Um, and so if you would like to register, here are our um, mainnet contracts and our calibration net contracts. Um, so go ahead, go grab a, an alpha uh, taste of what IPC can bring. Um, we're really excited about this, not just for the compute over data use case, but we're definitely excited about this for Lilypad as a testnet, um, but also for many others who want to bring um, different capabilities to their applications. And there's a couple of things we're really looking for with a good Web3 scalability framework. Um, First, we want to target internet scale applications. We want um, you know, gaming developers who um, want to bring their applications uh, to, to blockchain to be able to put all of their data on chain so that they're able to actually um, you know, scale with their users and build upon a foundation that you know, meets their <laughs> default expectations of what a platform should be able to support. Um, and one of the things that we enable as well in IPC that's, I think, different from any other scalability solution I've ever heard of is being able to unlock ephemeral or sub-second subnets, which can run very quickly by being regionally bounded. Say you want to spin up a subnet just within um, the West Coast or just within a specific data center. Um, that sort of recursive sharding or recursive scalability um, is something that IPC unlocks. It's aiming to make it super lightweight to spin up each one of those different subnets and then um, re-merge state through checkpoints with the parent chain. Um, and so this kind of like, you know, dynamic flow of, hey, I need more capacity. Okay, cool, I'm good now. I'm gonna re-merge state between networks. That's the sort of thing that can help us uh, attack, attack local demand. It can help us be much more efficient with, you know, say, doing a whole ton of data onboarding in a specific data center or with a specific client. Um, and that's the sort of foundation that we want for all of the applications we're building. Um, and last but not least, we also want a, a blockchain runtime that we're able to upgrade much more easily. So we want to get started faster by having easy modules where we can Great, pull in various different consensus modules, um, pull in different upgrade modules, um, and then over time we can iterate. We're not locked in to you know, a, a super tightly coupled um, blockchain system where everything's you know, defined at genesis and it's a hard fork every time that you wanna make a change, um, but a much more modular runtime utilizing things like FBM so that we can easily add new modules, customize modules, and it's you know just just deploying a smart contract every time you want to make changes. How wonderful would that be? If anyone's developed a, uh, an L1 blockchain, you know how amazing that sounds. Um, that's the vision. Um, and so those are the three breakthroughs that I think are super, super exciting, um, all within this theme of kind of compute over data and enabling web scale apps, but bringing really robust retrievals, helping add programmability and compute onto Filecoin data, and then scaling globally. All right, um, and so if anyone wants, wants a screenshot, but otherwise I'm happy, if we have time for questions, I'm happy to take any. Otherwise, if we don't have time, you can message me on Twitter, on Filecoin Slack, or on Telegram. I'm some combination of Momac and numbers. <laughs> All right, any questions? Questions, if you're up, come down here for questions. Roll the microphone at you. I feel like
well. Yep. Well, thank you. All right, then I will look forward to meeting all of you on Twitter and beyond. Thanks and have a rest of a wonderful rest of your evening.